Now that's attractive. Um, mostly just because there's science inside of it. Okay, let's maybe spend a little more time with these because these are definitely the brass rings. Uh, the Hammyburger. Thanks for stopping in, by the way, uh, the Hammyburger. So, um, I am very new to this game. I don't actually know a whole lot about it. Um, my understanding is that in real life, drag is what you will experience from creating a rocket that does not look very needle-like. Whereas in the current game, um, drag is just some value that they assign to each part. Uh, less is better. Um, but things like putting on those aerodynamic cones, right now they just add drag, and so they actually do the opposite of what they're intended to in real life. So the idea here is that the more drag that you have in the atmosphere, the more fuel it's going to take you to move up. So, I mean, in this case, less is better, um, but if you're trying to design something that's moving inside of space, my guess would be that you don't care that much about drag. Um, my guess is my guess is as good as yours at this point. Incidentally, if you have any feedback in terms of um, stuff to buy, uh, I'd love any any input. Otherwise, I think I might just leave this and um, focus on building a rocket to go to the moon or Mun. Okay, this is for a rogue. So that's interesting. That's definitely something I'd like to own at some point. Oh, but it requires mass landing, so... Um, I'm fairly certain I don't use any electricity at all until I make a probe. Well, I'm making a probe next, so that might be helpful. But, I mean, if I was able to use... If I was able to get to Minmus and back using an existing probe, I don't really need more electricity, so... Um... Yeah, um, so... This, honestly, the Hemi Burglar, so if you haven't tried the demo yet, um, I strongly recommend downloading it. Um, the first thing that I did was basically design ships that my friend who is obsessed with this game um, said either my computer was going to crash or the rocket was, and of course prove him wrong by flying them. Um, one of my earliest gaming memories is like getting out of bed late at night as a kid, well, I mean, as a little kid, to play, um, to play Civilization II. Um, and it indirectly taught me a whole bunch of stuff about history and all of that. So uh, my background, I'm currently an undergraduate in uh, economics, so I don't really have much of a hard sciences background, but I was interested in astronomy. So the one thing I've learned is no matter how much I, um, you know, no matter what an ignoramus I am in terms of physics or, or orbital mechanics or anything like that, um, I can't help but learn, you know, terms like apoapsis, periapsis, um, you know, go online and learn about some of the science going behind it. At least to me, that was an extremely appealing element of this game because it brought me back to some of those original moments um, playing Civ. Um, and then on top of it, I mean, it just has all of those things that are generally fun in a game. You build rockets, you know, you put some thought into it. Uh, if you screw up, you can kind of laugh at how terrified your astronauts are before they die. That sounds horrible. Um, and, I mean, like, it, it has enough challenges inside of it, and it definitely rewards you for putting some thought in terms of what you're doing. Um, but it always feels like there's something new to learn. Um, so, I usually wait for steam sales and stuff like that, but honestly, after I played around with the demo, um, I bought this and, I mean, shortly after buying it, I decided I had to stream it just because um, the, the experience I've had just trying to figure this stuff out has been really fun. 
and um, especially if you have some friends that you can talk about it with um, it's just a it's a nice little experience just to you know talk about some of the some of the stuff you did during the game so uh, I'm obviously very enthusiastic about the game um, but if you haven't checked out I mean if you know about drag I'm assuming you've checked out the demo but if you haven't that is a great place to start but with that in mind um, I don't really take a break now but I think I'll at least get the start on uh, I'm gonna get a start on this um, kind of this moon or month test a decent machine um, so I played the demo on a it's actually a computer that somebody gave to me um, it's the Athlon equivalent of the Intel uh, Core 2 Duo, which is a pretty old processor. I'm running this on a reasonably sophisticated um, Mac laptop right now, actually. that's By the way, I apologize for the quality. It's a bandwidth, not not a hardware constraint. But i tell you what, I'll just take a second here and see if I can find the, um, the specs. Um, so I'm going to assume you're on a PC. Um, their minimum requirements are Windows Visa, uh, Core 2 Duo, 3 gigabytes of RAM, um, and 512 megabytes VRAM uh, for graphic card. Uh, they do recommend, uh, their recommended settings are at least a Core i3 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Um, the suspicion that I have is you would experience um, performance deficiencies uh, if you made very elaborate rocket like basically this thing is like a physics simulator right so yeah I don't know if you're in Canada or not Canada apparently is relatively notorious for its bandwidth I'm in Vancouver I'm also cheap so um, but I mean I suppose I shouldn't complain about the fact that I am able to at least stream because I know there are some people who can only watch on um, on mobile um, but yeah, so on the computer point of view, um, I don't quite know uh, what would qualify as a decent machine, um, but what I would say is probably if you design a very elaborate rocket, you are going to, um, you're probably going to experience some interruptions when you're in things like the atmosphere. Uh, but my suspicion also is that as you start going through the stages of your rocket and you remove them, uh, the performance is going to get better. So, I'm going to take that that your computer. Oh, Grand Prairie. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I actually have a couple friends from. They were from Grand Prairie. I don't know if they're still there. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that any sob story I can tell you about my internet is. Uh, is going to pale in comparison to whatever whatever horror stories you have to tell. I understand that um, internet service is not the easiest thing to uh, to get out there. Okay, what am I doing with this machine? Okay, I should say if you run the demo, um, which actually I probably oh, probably too old new one comes away okay great well I mean gives you something to look forward to um, and the other thing too like the um, the demo version of Kerbal is a um, it is an older build um, so you're not gonna see a lot of the parts that I'm using inside of this I mean that's fine you can still have fun with it um, I had a blast I made a couple of videos that people got a got a laugh out of but um, even though it's an older build, I mean, it's not like they put in some massive optimization uh, in the, you know, in, in later builds, and it's not like, you know, it's not like the physics that they use in the demo are completely unlike anything inside here. So, I think it'd probably be a good, um, I think it'd be good just to give it a try. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, I'm just gonna build. So the first thing that I ran into in terms of probes um, 
was, especially when, I mean, if I went into the dark, I'm screwed. But, um, I had this experience where they take up a lot of energy, so the first thing that I want to do, and especially because drag is not a problem, um, or not drag, but, um, oh, so yeah, the, the shape doesn't matter when it comes to drag, uh, I'm just going to stick as many solar panels as I can on here, so, and batteries. Next, we will basically do the same trick that we did on the Minmus Lander. And stick some RCS on that so I can get a little bit of control. Now, this was from earlier on in the episode, but the challenge that I will face from a a Mun landing is that it is easier to get there, but apparently you need a lot of fuel to you need a lot of fuel to land. So I'm gonna try something a little unconventional. Extreme, but I think I'll go for this just as a trial. And then there's really no reason not to include the barometer or the uh, thermometer just because that's something you can constantly spam for the data. Um, and then I need to include the Communitron, which I'll stick right on top. I'm going to be in space. I still don't know a lot about... Give me some max thrust. I guess this is technically a little bit more efficient just because of its, its less mass for 30 thrust, but if I put five of these on, that's 250 combined thrust, that's more than one of these. So. This is a fantastic example about how uh, the way they do drag allows you to design ships that NASA would be utterly horrified by. Um, this definitely would give more drag than, than it should. Um, I am definitely going to need parachutes. because nobody's on it. And I don't believe I can attach a parachute to something like this. So this will actually be a good test to see whether or not these radial mounted ones are actually worth it. Um. Oh, actually, uh, the Hemi Burglar, if you were back, um, a really good example of how drag works in this game is on this screen where it says stowed drag is 0.22, semi-deployed drag is 1, and fully deployed drag is 500. So if you think about how a parachute works um, when it's fully deployed, 
obviously you're going down when you you're doing that but in this game um, just consider it like a you can consider drag as an inverse parachute that's probably the best way I can explain it okay so this is theoretically the device that should get me onto the moon and so will get me onto the moon landed and return and now I need the thing to get me into space So this is probably not something I'm going to use for a Kerbal. Actually, I think I'll set my control... Ah, no, I'll do the action groups at the end. Okay, so... I have a bit of a conundrum. So I needed... So I take all that with me. So, this is definitely a very heavy craft, so I think I will use the same power that I used to get to Midmus to take this into the air. I'm using this engine just because it gives me a little more control. These radial decouplers work really well that last time, so let's stick those on. basically the same thing that I did last time. But it worked, so I might as well stick with it.
Okay, so let's think about the reasoning here. All the science stuff is up here. Problem is, it's very heavy. So I use the same setup I needed to get into effectively an orbit around Minmus. This should at least take me down to the surface of the Mun. I have five of these tanks. But the middle one... Okay, as long as the middle one lasts me till I get into orbit, I can get back to Kerbin. So... Here, I am going to just set a few control groups. Oh, I don't want to toggle the display. So, log the data. And log temperature. Saved me last time, the Separatron. Yeah, I could do better on the symmetry. <laughs> okay, so you turn around. Okay, so that's probably actually a really bad idea, because if I'm going to fire these things at the top, the top end is going to go flying down, and I have a suspicion that this is going to come in and smack the bottom, so I'm going to try putting these closer to the middle, actually. that way it's not sort of spinning. I mean, that could have been completely unfounded, but that seems like the sort of thing a game would do to troll me. Okay, so let's go over some of the logic of this ship. This is the same setup I had for the Minmus probe. Um, These are the most powerful rockets I could get. These tanks are going to empty, they're going to separate out. This thing is going to take me the rest of the way. It'll separate, at which point I'm going to use basically five rockets to, if I haven't already established an orbit around the Mun, and then um, yeah, I mean establish an orbit around the Mun, land, and get back. Um, this centerpiece has twice as much fuel as the others. So the drawback is that this basically becomes dead weight in the end. But I think... I mean, as long as I can kind of push myself on a collision course with Kerbin, that's not going to be the end of the world, I don't think. So we'll give it a try. Um, I don't see any other reason but to use the Delta Deluxe at this point, so... More winglets. I mean, this thing is the definition of ugly, but I don't care, it works. <laughs> Theoretically.
Okay, I'm about half an hour past the time that I would normally do a break, so I think I'm just going to take three minutes to get up, stretch, uh, maybe get a drink of water. I encourage you all to do the same. I am just going to go back to... I'm going to save this craft. Don't have any humorous names this week, unfortunately, so... I'm going to save that. go to a place where I don't have music. Okay, that's not music. And for the three minutes... Uh, here we go.
All right, space paints look complicated, so let's go back to our Munlander, Mun probe. Okay, so I know I just did a, did this, but I don't think it hurts to double check my logic on on this machine. Okay, so five rockets down below, four of the most powerful, plus one which is good for steering, in addition to four winglets to drive me. These tanks drain, they get jettisoned. This tank should take me to orbit, hopefully partway to the Mun. That gets jettisoned. I have five tanks running simultaneously that should land. These will drain first and will actually drain quite quickly, but I have one more remaining. I suspect when I get to halfway on this kind of double stack, if I haven't already started my trip back, I'm stuck, because this seems to be a really heavy device. Um, but fortunately, it's unmanned, so I can be as reckless as I want, and I have, I'm almost certain that I am not going to use this device um, when it comes to actual people. And I'll just double check that my action groups are what they should be. Yeah, so I basically use number one, uh, I use key number one to just log the temperature data, actually. Uh, and to to um, drop sort of the landing gear. Let's just double check that all these are lining up. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's about as good as I can hope for. Actually, I think I used three rockets on this, so this might be a little bit overkill, but. I'm not going to complain if it is, so I think the time for talk is done, and the time is to launch robots onto the moon. I remember the last time I did this at night, it got really boring to watch. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to speed up. It's kind of a waste of a day, but I don't know if time actually means anything. But Okay, that's better. And I know the break just treated you to a bunch of um, two steps from hell, but it wouldn't be a launch without one, so... Oh, great. Thanks, Tammy Burglar. So I don't know how much you caught of the, um, the rundown, but I'll maybe just give a, a quick one on here. Um, the main features that I'm looking for on these are um, these little thrusters because on my previous previous run uh, I would have this problem of detaching fuel tanks that would um, basically they just like guillotine half the rocket um, which is not a desirable property of any rocket um, I think this top bit is comically heavy for um, landing on the moon, but I mean, it also has four science modules and that's kind of on purpose. I want to try and collect as much as I can because ideally this thing's going to come back home. And if it turns out that I can move this thing back, um, then it should be easier to do something lighter um, with a Kerbal inside of it. So this is very much experimental, but I mean, nobody cares when robots die. So, um, and I mean, I kind of blasted everybody with the um, dramatic music for launches, but it wouldn't be my stream if I didn't do that. If I didn't do uh, launch music, so let's see what we can find. Something short. Yeah, this will do. <laughs>
So it was definitely a slower start than I was hoping for, but we've gotten up. Um, those little rockets on the side did exactly what they were supposed to, so I'm going to switch views. And what I'm really looking to have happen now is I want to have my apoapsis at 100,000. And this is a little concerning. Yeah, I am probably going to come crashing back to Earth, to be totally honest. I think I made this too heavy. Yeah, so basically what's going to happen here, I still have plenty of fuel, um, but the ship is so heavy, um, I'm not really able to kind of escape the... Um, well, actually, okay, let's see if we can rescue this. Let's just burn straight horizontal. I think that just winds up hastening my... Yeah, so I'm just going to wind up crashing back down to the planet. Okay, well, that's... Um, no, well, um, yeah, sorry, I was kind of talking to myself for a little bit there. Um, the Hammy Burglar, one of the reasons why it's... Yeah, too much science. <laughs> um, exactly correct. I think I'm just going to go back to the perspective here, and... It's kind of boring if I... Okay, actually, let's give me a chance to double-check the price and explain, the, uh, explain why it costs what it does. So let's shut down this engine. Jettison. I mean, this is kind of what should have landed on the moon. Um, definitely burns efficiently, but um, getting there is a problem, so. I am mildly concerned that the parachutes didn't just deploy. Okay, well, I'm going to let this thing free fall for a bit. Um, I will see the cost, and then I will explain why it costs what it does. Oh, there's the parachutes. Good. So, sorry, uh, I was slightly mistaken. It is $26.99 on the Steam store. Um, I am told it goes on sale somewhat regularly, but that honestly, that wasn't my experience. I did buy it at full price. I believe one of the reasons why it costs what it does is, is this game is still in early access. I think they're on like version 0 0.24. So things like, you know, drag just being some number, which is the sum of all of these parts, is probably not something that they want to include in the final game. I suspect that they are actually a fair ways off on, um, on completing it. So... Um, to my mind, I mean, I have a lot of fun playing this, and clearly, you know, putting on corny music and putting on a show for people is part of the appeal for me. Um, but with that in mind, I'm actually usually very hesitant to buy early access games just because it seems like developers sort of abandon them uh, after they've collected the money. Um, they just don't really have an incentive to see it to completion. Um, I don't believe that's the case in terms of Kerbal Space Program, but I believe one of the reasons why it is not yet a full-priced game is because you are effectively testing it for them and paying them for the privilege. But, I mean, they have made, in my opinion, a very fun game, so I'm very happy to, to pay that cost. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. And I mean, again, it, it, they're good. Uh, the demo is a fairly good representation of what you're going to be experiencing inside of the game. So uh, I will admit, actually, when I first tried the demo, um, I was largely confused and uninterested by it. And I actually am very curious why I felt that way because I'm having an absolute blast, even if it is a boring um, descent. Actually, the first tip I will give about um, using... The way this thing should have worked is I would hit the number two and the landing gear would come down. But Oh, you know what? I can still do science here. All right, well, nothing to be gained from that. A little bit to gain, be gained from that. <laughs> All right, well, that is also another undesirable feature of this vessel. <laughs> um, 
clearly I know where the problems lay. Okay, anyways, so that was a disaster. Yeah, thank you. Uh, unintentional pun, but I will take credit for it anyway. All right, let's <laughs> collect this disaster of a flight. Did I get any science from this is the real question. I got nothing. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I mean, as long as, uh, I guess those are the only caveats that I would give people in terms of what they are getting themselves into when they play this game. It is definitely not a finished work, but um, you, I mean, the results kind of speak for themselves, right? Obviously, the people who made this game really, like, they really like their subject matter. They want to have fun with it. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to scrap everything at this point. Um, and, I mean, I think it comes through in the gameplay, I think it comes through in the experiences, and the, um, the reactions of the Kerbals. Um, I actually think this video might still be on my stream and my archives, but, uh, the Flight of the America. Um, the spaceman who is who did the first walk on the moon is, uh, a character known as Jebediah Kerman. Now, apparently, the Kerbals have uh, flags for their personalities. One of them is uh, B-A-D-S. So if they have the badass flag, um, apparently, they will basically laugh at everything but the most dangerous situations. Um, during the entire flight of this absolute monstrosity of a rocket, uh, Jebediah Kerman, the badass, was screaming his head off. Um, which is where I originally started doing the uh, really corny, well, not corny music, but like very overly dramatic music. So. Oh yeah, I, this this game, in my opinion, um, if they were to leave it in its current state, uh, it would obviously be unfinished, but I would not feel that I had wasted my $25. Um, that's not been my experience with all... Um, early access games and so I'm always very cautious um, whenever I give people advice like that but certainly I mean it seems like you're quite enthusiastic about it and there's nothing to be I mean there's really nothing to lose to download the um, the demo and see see whether or not you like it um, or if you're feeling like a risk taker you just go ahead and buy it but I think squad has done a really wonderful job with this game and uh, I'm I'm certainly very happy I mean as a guy who's a complete cheap ass and like never buys games at full price. Um, I'm very happy I bought this one I did because I honestly don't know what I would be doing the school term if I um, if I didn't. So, um, I'm going to try something a little unconventional. No, I need the extra few. Okay. So the trick about the um, the trick about the moon is apparently it's got heavier gravity, so it's harder to land on. So I definitely need the thrust on my ship. Um, there's a tripod looking thing. Oh, have I not unlocked that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let me think about how I do this. Does fuel go through this, actually? I think I'll add a few lines just in case. Oh, here's what I'll do. Okay. So I still want to pack a lot of science on this thing. Oh wait, no, that's not going to work though, because I still need rockets on the end. Okay, well, you know, I'll keep that form. Um, sh 
should have added three. Oh, oh I am uh, in school. Uh, I'm in my fourth year of an economics degree. Um, although I do, I wound up um, TAing a computer science class, so I suppose I do a little teaching, but I um, presently just a student. Uh, the intention is to do grad school, and hopefully I can get some teaching done. Although, I mean, I think this is doing some plenty of teaching for me. Maybe <laughs> if I could do it all over again, maybe I'd wind up with a physics degree. So I wonder if fuel lines work this way. One of the things I'm thinking of doing is connecting these fuel lines and then connecting it up above. Yeah, that doesn't look like that's connecting at all. can't do that either because I need to connect the... Oh, wow. Okay, so rocket science is actually hard, it turns out. How do I connect... Okay, well, this isn't gonna work. like last time. Yeah, okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. So I'll actually start with the parachutes. Um, where is it? Oh yeah, so one thing I will say about this, uh, I still have some trouble navigating the Menu. Oh, that's not really a thing about the game, though, so... Um, you know what? I think I'll just try sticking them... Yeah, I think I'll just try sticking them here. Um, lights and landing gear. stage so basically the parachutes are just their own deal and this is the thing that actually kept burning me on the um, the first flight I did was these radial decouplers but because these fuel tanks are so heavy um, I think it'll be nice if I can leave them on the surface of the moon Um, 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I should say if you did if you didn't like that feature, um, you can always take off the angle snap and you get a little bit more freeform. Okay, well I have a part, so it's maybe not showing you as freeform as it is. But honestly, the angle snap and the symmetry mode are things that are um, invaluable to me. Um, one thing I will say is sometimes these radial decouplers are a little hard to attach onto, but I got lucky this time, so um, I think I was swearing at the game a couple of times because of it. Alright, now I just made a really stupid design decision because obviously the landing gear is not going to be useful if I have two tanks, so that is a little bit better. This is the upper stage, which I hope is enough to manage a uh, moon landing. Um, I should... Well, moon landing and return. Um, I should add the other two bits of science. So, um, one of the things about this uh, science mode, which was formerly career mode, is um, adding this barometric sen Yeah, the barometer and the um, thermometer. As long as you put the, this is the one thing, one bit of symmetry that the game won't do for you um, if you have two different items. Uh, but basically, it's always a good idea to have these on your missions, just because you can use them pretty much an unlimited number of times. I put an antenna on the top just so I can keep sending out information. So if I happen to be over a biome that I haven't visited yet, um, I can just you know hit uh, log the pressure data, log the atmospheric data. And, um, you know, that's just some free science I can pick up by flying over an interesting location. So, um, this is clearly unacceptable in real life, but I'm not changing it. <laughs> um, okay, so the theory is that this thing will be enough to handle the moon, um, or the moon, um, but... The problem last time, of course, was I wasn't actually able to get close enough. So let's start by adding a decoupler. Oops. Again, I still think four fuel tanks is the way to go on this one, so I'm going to start with that. Um, I will do... I definitely like these radial decouplers. Now, I have been doing three-way symmetry, so... I mean, I could theoretically add the f fourth rocket. I'll see if I can get by with three. Um, similar idea here which is this one has a, a gimbal inside of it so this will be a little bit better for steering whereas these just are raw power um, to compensate I will add these fuel lines so that this centerpiece always has enough fuel and should I do that on this Yes, I want to do the same trick, and the reason for that is once these things are exhausted, I can throw them away, so if I can keep all the fuel in the center, uh, so much the better for me. Um, now, as much as I hate adding extra weight, I know I'm definitely going to need to add some structure to this, so it doesn't actually add that much weight, it's like what, yeah, 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. Um, so these are definitely, especially on something with lots of jutting out parts like this, this is actually really good, um, this is a good thing to have. Um, this is a little bit more compact, so I'm okay with that. This is such an ugly, <laughs> ugly machine. I think that should be enough. I, I know I can really go to town with those, but... I'm 
And I know I just screwed up my um, my order of everything, so it's not really facing away from the ship. wondering if I wind up with the same problem I had last time, but this is feasible, I'll say. Actually, I should make sure the landing gear does what it's... Oh yeah, it's one of these narrow ones, so that should... that should do it. We are now on the Mark II. Okay, so... basic idea, four rockets fire, all at once take me to this should take me to the atmosphere and establish an orbit if it doesn't do that I need to go back and reevaluate this upper part again um, this disconnects so this is the first phase next phase is to decouple these and have these rockets fire just to get them out of the way um, once this fuel tank empties wait where's this decouple oh yeah it's gotta go to a different stage that's why I do this annoying checklist. Okay, so this decoupler basically gets rid of the lower part. If I am not already in orbit around the moon, I'm probably not going to be able to get back. Although, again, if this just winds up as junk on the moon, I can handle that. Um, and then I think I've already done some science. If I remember correctly, I've, I think I've actually already done some science in the um, orbit of the moon. Um, but basically, whatever I haven't... Um, Whatever, whatever science I haven't already done, uh, I will do there. And my action groups... Did moving that light change anything? Nope. Okay. This is probably uglier than the last one, but... Okay, I'm running out of music. Um, this one's slightly longer. I can't remember if I've used this one before or not. Okay, I forgot very one important part of this um, flight. My winglets! Not just one. There we go. I'm not calling that the Mark III. I'm calling that idiocy on my part. It's really not the same if I start the music halfway through, but I think this one has a long build-up, so... Yeah. 
Yes, you can direct the rocket. I've turned on something called SAS, which is going to give me some... Uh, it's going to kind of balance things out for me. Um, but the nice... The ideal launch has kind of a little bit of a tilt to it, just so you're not completely fighting against um, your upward ascent. But in that case, I was a little premature, so it wound up... Um, it kind of wound up screwing me in that case. Remarkably effective parachute tests. So that particular launch, um, I definitely screwed up a little bit in my direction, but that thing got out of hand really quickly. Um, I think I am going to try launching this again. There's some other problems I have with this rocket design, um, which I think make it unfeasible. But this time around, I just want to see if I'm actually able to establish an orbit with it with a direct, um, a direct upward thrust. Um, I kind of mentioned this a little bit before everything went nuts. Um, ideally, you just have this gradual tilt to about a 45 degree angle, so you're not completely fighting. Wow. Alright then. Um, ideally, you have this uh, 45 degree... Um, 45 degree tilt. Um, so that you can get your apoapsis nice and high, um, but not completely fight um, all the elements on your way up. Uh, regrettably, <laughs> um, this one, I think it's because it's very top heavy. Um, once I start doing an ascent like that, I get into trouble. 
I'm also not quite sure why it is completely exploding on impact. Um, maybe I need... Well, I can't need more parachute. I actually wasn't watching to see what... Um, I wasn't watching to see what um, speed I was going at. So, let's revert to... Okay, I'm going to try something different with the parachutes on the body. And I'll see if I can fit forward. Yeah, it's not exactly pretty, but nothing about the ship is pretty, so... Um, then landing struts. So I'm not quite sure why all three weren't deploying, because they're certainly all triggered. Okay, well this one I'm just gonna do. Oh, you know what I also forgot? Okay, so I'm going to basically do the same thing again, except that this time I'm going to go straight up. Oh, great, thank you. Eight uh, meters a second. So yeah, if it's eight, then that's definitely too fast for landing. Um, you probably want to be at about five, I think. Um, but this one, I mean... Honestly, I don't expect a whole lot to um, to be different about this one, but what I am going to try and do is just go straight up. I actually want to see if I can make orbit with this, because if I can't, I need to reimagine what I'm doing in this upper part. Because uh, it's one thing to take a whole bunch of fuel up there, but if I can't actually get into orbit, it doesn't really matter how much fuel I bring. So, uh, No music this time. This might be a short trip. try to do a proper landing, as in like you're guiding the rocket, you're trying to... yeah, this thing is really hard to control. If you're trying to guide the rocket, like keep, you know, make sure you don't crash into the ground or something like that, um, you're... Oh, sorry, I just gotta check my apoapsis. Um, Yeah, you'd think so, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Okay, and looks like I am not succeeding at um, getting high enough altitude. So basically the ship's too heavy. Um, yeah, so as far as water is concerned, um, it's helpful for kind of measuring your distance from the ground. So, you know, if you see it's 500 meters, you know you really got to, you know, you got to get ready for things to go. Um, you got to get ready for thing for your landing. 
Whereas, you know, if you're trying to land in a mountain range, um, it could tell you that the altitude is like 10 kilometers high, but you could literally be inches from crashing your ship into the ground and you haven't even dumped your landing gear. Um, the only way I've been able to figure out, you know, how to get around that is really by, um, by using um, uh, lights. They'll give you at least a visual cue as ter in terms of how far down the ground is. And as far as this trip is concerned, I'll be lucky if I can make it to 30,000 meters. I, basically, you need to be um, 70 kilometers or higher. Otherwise, you just come crashing back down to, to the planet. And there's no way I'm going to over double my ability on my um, uh, Apple apps on this fuel. But yeah, um, so far as uh, so far as the surface that you land on, in terms of the science that you collect, it matters. In terms of the um, altitude you need to be wary at, it matters. But at in the current form of the game, it does not appear to have any effect on um, what happens to your craft when you land. I do have more fuel, but honestly, it'd just be a waste of time to try and get to the mun on this. So I'm going to revert back to vehicle assembly. And I think it's time I reviewed my upper part. Okay, so this is necessary. I'm going to say that this is necessary just because this gives me extra control. Um, let's just do something purely vertical. Um, I'm going to try two science modules, but I think that might hurt me in the end. I definitely need to include two mystery goo. This is actually a feature that you might find kind of interesting. So I just enabled center of mass. Um, now I'm going to switch this to a single one. And you're going to notice, like, once I actually attach one of these um, goo containers. Now, goo containers are light. Actually, let's see if I can do this with a fuel tank. Which is heavier. This is heavy. Like, you can see how the center of mass is just completely changing. Uh, in real time with my, um, it's changing in real time with where I place it. So this is a nice little feature. I don't use it as often just because I think the symmetry is enough. Um, but if you wanted to get a little granular in terms of how your uh, rocket is working, add four main thrusters. You mean to the top, or do you mean to the to this thing?
Yeah, that is actually a really good point. It, also, what it'll do is it'll allow me to add another winglet. Um, that's a really good point, actually. Um, Because that's going to get over both my control issues and also my um, this problem of lift. I probably I should I that I should have uh, done that before I completely gutted the top part. But I think I can do something interesting with this. So Better put it at the bottom or the top. I don't think it really matters at this point because everything's here already and these weigh nothing, so. Um, landing gear is going to be a bit weird. Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's not so much um, the lag in terms of when I can read it. I pretty much read a message as soon as you send it. Um, unfortunately, the even for like um, uh, streamers who have uh, uh, like the guys you can subscribe to, the people with um, thousands of viewers, even they have uh, about a 30 second lag. It just, I don't know if it's encoding for Twitch. I don't know if they do that on purpose, uh, but it definitely makes it very hard for communication. Um, especially like when I ask a question or something like that, I kind of know I need to wait. So it's um, a little difficult to be, uh, you know, to have, any kind of showmanship when you just sort of hang around waiting for chat. But yeah, it definitely creates a bit of an asymmetry for the, um, you know, the chatter in the audience. So sorry about that. Uh, but that said, I mean, you're, um, I, I definitely like your, I like your suggestion in terms of the four, four rockets. I'm gonna, gonna do that. I'm still gonna use my slim down top. Uh, and then I'm just gonna stick some feet on it and see, see what can happen. The big thing is I don't actually need three science modules, it just I kind of wanted it because I had it on the previous one, so... Oh, right, I need lights. You don't actually need to set action groups, I just find it, like... Stuff like lowering legs and turning on lights, um, and lowering a ladder when you have somebody on, you know, on board. Those are all things that are kind of obvious. So it's just something I like to, to do, um, and it's something I found out this week, right? So as soon as you find a new, you know, a new toy to play with, you want to use it as much as you can. Um, barometer. I still have not actually brought my atmospheric data back. It's always it's always blown up. Oh god, what do I do about parachutes? Um, hmm. I wonder if I could just stick four on top of the science module. That'd be neat if I could. Um, Yep, all right. I'm not going to question it. So, one thing I'm going to admit about this design, I don't actually think these parachutes are going to work, but I think what's going to blow up is the landing gear and the two fuel tanks, and this upper science part is actually going to live. So. Clearly, if this was career mode and I needed to worry about money, this would be a disaster. <laughs> but um, I think at this point we were very clearly just having fun, so I am not going to. I'm not going to hold. You know, I'm not going to hold myself too seriously to design decisions such as blowing up rockets, or sorry, blow, blowing up fuel tanks.
quite the distance I was zoomed out. All right. By the way, I don't actually think there's any advantage to starting off this high. Uh, this is just a convention that I adopted when I was doing my ridiculous um, flights. I said, oh, look, I'm guaranteed 132 meters. Even if I was designing something that was so heavy, I could never actually get uh, off the planet. But um, that's the only reason why I do this. It's purely a habit now. Um, now, what I didn't do was I, I didn't do my staging very well, so I should actually fix that right now. Um, these four, this one should fire at the same time. The radial decoupler here. That is much more like what it should be. Uh, again, I, as much as I like playing the music, um, for these ones which are potentially short, I think I'm just going to skip it. When I'm back to being serious, we can have serious music. Okay, so four rockets turned out. Four. Okay, that's been terrifies me, but we're still good. So at this point here, I'm just going to try burning in prograde. Um, I'm going to worry a little bit if this counter starts going down. Um, but the more I burn prograde, basically, that's going to extend this loop here. Um, wow, I'm really spinning. Okay, well, it's a probe, so I'm not going to worry. Um, I'm basically going to watch this thing count up until it gets to 100,000. When you get kind of closer to these flat areas, it starts going up very rapidly. So I'm using quite a bit of fuel, but I suspect when it comes time to establish my orbit, I'm not going to use that much. Uh, and that's it's actually fairly nice just because I, um, like I can kind of use all of that to get to the month. And ideally, I'll just be using the fuel to actually land. Um, I'm not quite sure what it takes to actually land yet. So I may not have brought enough in this context, but at least we finally established an orbit. Okay. So the maneuver I'm basically going to do here, um, just the same way that I was going to kind of extend this reach so that I could get to uh, 100,000 meters or 100 kilometers. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fire prograde in the direction that I'm already going, but I'm going to do it at the highest point 
So I basically establish a circular orbit. Now you don't actually have to use this tool. I just find it kind of helpful because once these things go opposite to each other, it's more or less circular, like 102.99. I'm definitely not gonna come crashing back because I'm in the atmosphere. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to take my uh, readings. It's probably too late now. Oh, it's not even letting me take readings. pressure to take in the no pressure to take in space so you don't actually need to use this tool here but it's just a nice little marker it tells me that I'm gonna hit it in a minute and 25 seconds and it says that I'm gonna actually need to burn for 29 seconds which is a little surprising to me to be honest um, but what I normally do in that case is I just take it the estimated burn and I cut it in half so half of the time I'm burning before I hit the node the other half is after obviously um, and that should get me as close as I can get to sort of this estimated value here again as long as you just burn in prograde you'll actually see this blue line um, and your your periapsis the lowest point in the orbit that's just gonna update itself automatically so it's not entirely necessary to do but I, I like doing it just because it's a nice um, it's a it's a nice quantifiable way to know what you're doing You may have noticed there's a green light on the left of my sort of my little tracking ball that I just turned on, the RCS. Um, that was that orange fuel tank that I put on top of it. There's also four little thrusters there, which um, I think I'm close enough to the orbit. Oh, yeah, I can't actually show it working. Um, but basically, they're little thrusters at the end just to kind of nudge the ship where I, I want it to go. So this is good. You can kind of see that this is at the flat point here, so really this is just going straight. It's going straight forward, but gravity is causing me to go in this curve. And if I zoom out, you can start seeing my orbit turn a bit more circular. It's not going to be perfect just because I can't instantly apply that force at the high point, um, but I just need an approximation anyway. So that's I kind of overshot, but that's not the end of the world. So my actual orbit wound up being 105.99. So that's perfectly acceptable and I still have it looks like I've actually got plenty of fuel in this center component so um, that's good news it means I can use as much fuel as I need to get to the Mun. Now the word goes that apparently if you aim 45 degrees um, from where the Mun presently is you're gonna be fine um, but what I like to do is just use this, um, basically just fire prograde so I'm at least kind of touching that orbit. And the nice thing about the tool, unlike Minimus uh, where I was before, like the Mun has a fairly flat orbit around Kerbin. So really, I can now take this tool and I can point it to all the right directions. Now, clearly this is not going to, or is it? Oh right, I got turned around, so the MUN is actually moving this way. Uh, but it's actually going to tell you when you get into... Um, like when you get into a close orbit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this as my target. And this is actually going to show me what's happening. So right now I'm on a path where I'm basically just going to crash directly into it. Which is fine if I'm confident in my landing, but I'd like a little bit more control. So now um, I can go back, I can sort of take some of the heat off this, and I can actually see how that's affecting my orbit on the Mun right now. One other nice thing is, just because I'm not like hammering down on the, um, on the thrusters here, I'm going to require less fuel to, uh, to travel. I mean, again, I've got plenty right now, and I've still got the two tanks there, or still got the two tanks when I, um, when I do the separation, but it's just, it's nice to keep conscious of that. If you can find more efficient ways to get places, it will, um, it, it basically pays off in the long run because you, um, like you're able to do those maneuvers to get to other planets. I'm still trying to figure out how you can like use the gravity of one thing to go to another 
like there's definitely a lot that you can do here in terms of sort of slingshotting off of one planet to get to another one so that way you don't need to fire your thrusters um, but that's a level of sophistication which is far beyond uh, what I've hit myself so I'd like to one day um, but at this point I'm still just trying to land on the moon which we've been able to do for several decades uh, so baby steps um, you can sort of see the white I'll zoom in on this so if you look near the top you can see these little shoots of white that's just me using the thrusters to uh, redirect the ship okay so I'm where I need to be now so far as I can tell actually I don't have as much fuel as I thought I wonder if that's including Yeah, that's only 90. Okay, so I don't have nearly as much fuel as I thought. Well, we'll give it a shot. Um, I don't think there's anything we can get from Mr. Goo at this point. No. So I believe the time uh, node in T minus 20 at the bottom here beside the ball, I believe that's real time. So at this point, I'm just going to hit the speed up. I don't want to go too nuts with it, just because in the end, um, like you can't go back in time. So if I miss the shot, I'm hooped. And it tells me it'll take approximately 45 seconds, but I need to keep in mind that I'm probably going to ditch this lower part of my um, my craft. So I think I'm I'm not going to divide it evenly into two. I'm actually going to put the bulk of it at the start, just so I can detach the bottom part and I can sort of reevaluate where I am in terms of um, in terms of fuel so that normally would have been about 22 23 let's take it at 45 so it's gonna be an imperfect um, mon orbit but again it's not bad because you can always sort of correct it once you have the, the broad strokes Okay, so that's out of fuel. Yeah, and that says I need a full minute, so that's kind of concerning, but it also doesn't use as much um, also doesn't use as much fuel to burn, so So I kind of, I was, actually no, that's not the worst timing. Okay, so the orange line actually sh shows what I'm actually going to do. 62, I think I can do better. Okay, right, now that's too far, so that's a problem. Okay, so I've made a little bit of a problem for myself in that I got a bit too overzealous. Um, I'm on a crash course with the moon, which I could theoretically navigate, but the big problem I have is it's the face that's not—it's the side that's not facing the sun, and this thing is running on solar panels. <laughs> so it's one thing to have a Kerbal piloting your ship, but it's completely unacceptable to be on the dark side when you are using 
solar power. So the way I fix this is I can't do anything about this waypoint here, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to look for kind of this midpoint where it's nice and smooth. And I'm just going to pull back a bit to see where I can get my periaps. And the nice thing about this is you can look at what it you can look at what it takes um, in terms of like fuel usage. And if you were to compare what I was doing close to Kerbin to um, to what I'm doing on this uh, at this area here, I'm requiring almost no influence uh, by the thruster. Like it says, 6.9 meters a second is all that I need to make that adjustment at this point. Whereas if I was closer to the planet, I would be I'd be fighting against the planet's uh, force on me. So where possible, it's actually desirable to do these maneuvers kind of halfway through. Unfortunately, it's not always possible. Like I do actually need to widen my orbit around Kerbin enough to actually hit the Mun in the first place. So it's kind of these, it's these trade-offs. I don't, uh, I'm by no means an expert on them. So I suspect there's some spots where I could probably find some efficiencies. Um, but this will at least get me into an orbit. So I'll, uh, I'll run with that for now. Even though it isn't giving me an estimated burn, I know, like, to give you a comparison, when I was trying to s establish this um, Mun encounter in the first place, I... what was it? I think it was something like I needed 800 meters a second to establish that. If I look at to the right of the, um, the navigation ball right now, it's telling me I need 6.9 meters a second, which I can get at a fairly low thrust. So I'm not too worried about the estimated burn. I'm just only going to use it a couple of seconds before uh, I hit the node, especially because it's really nice and flat in this area. So just because I've moved forward a little bit doesn't actually mean a whole lot. Um, I believe this is just because uh, my craft is slowed down, but I'm still trying to figure out the physics of that. I think two seconds is a good time, yeah. And you can just see that this this is uh, falling down. And my actual periaps, I think, is a bit higher than what I wanted, but I'll live with that, so... Yeah, 57. I can do better than 57, but it's not, it's not a disaster, so... Um, and I want to conserve as much fuel for the landing, because I understand the landing is actually quite hard to do. So I don't think there's any science for me to do out here, but it's not bad to check. Yeah, so I could do this and I'd get five science, but I have a suspicion that I can probably do something on the surface of the Mun to get more. And this is in the middle of space, so I've probably, yeah, two science. If I wasn't willing to give up one of two units for five science, I'm not willing to give up one of two units for 2.3 science. So at this point, I am just going to wait. Basically, the probe is going to hit this this area here. The moon's going to come around, and um, basically this and this are going to sort of align. And actually, I can set this up right now. I'm going to do the opposite of the maneuver that I did when I was around Kerbin. Instead of burning prograde so that I'm kind of moving along the same... I don't think this can be called a vector, but basically I'm kind of moving along with the momentum that I have. I'm actually going to move in the opposite direction, and that's going to close down the... Um, 
It's going to close down the circle so that I get closer. And you can notice again, if you look at that, 283.9 meters a second, I'm going to need quite a bit to accomplish that. But fortunately here, it gives me an estimated burn of 35 seconds, which I know I have. It will leave me a lot for the landing, so I'm probably going to have to ditch the thing on the surface. But we'll deal with that when we get there. It's, um, it's not over yet, so... I am going to speed up, though, because... I've got one day in however they measure a day before I land. It's probably like six hours. Yeah. Let's see, now I pulled into the Mun Sphere of Influence. Counting down the minutes. I'm just going to slow down for a second so I can at least point myself in the direction I want to go. And this is definitely one of those uh, cases I'm going to use the divide by two rule. So if it's 36 second burn, uh, I'm going to wait till I'm 13 seconds away from the node. And then I should close my orbit when I'm 13 seconds away from the node. It never works perfectly like this because um, I'm trying to establish an orbit. And it's a lot more curved. Like it's the straightest part in this... Um, it's the straightest part in this current trajectory I'm on, but it's still... It's still not really... Like, there's not a lot of room for error. In that previous case where it only took me seven, like, it was... It was very easy to manipulate the, uh, the shape of that... That path, whereas here, I'm really kind of in the sweet spot, um, which is why I really want to burn a lot pretty quickly. Uh, but it's usually better to just show these things, so... When I get within 13 seconds, I'll just let her rip, and um, and you can see it turn into a circle. kind of already see the orange, but that's my orbit around Kerbin, so that's going to look a bit weird, but this is going to start collapsing on itself pretty soon. I suspect I have enough fuel for a landing, but not a return. And this is definitely not going to be a very circular orbit. Actually, you know what? I can probably make it more circular, though. 49, 86. I actually don't think I'm going to get any better than that, because that's probably going to crash in. So I think the best thing I can do now is when I'm at Peria. So. That's kind of an illustration in terms of how you establish an orbit. You fire the opposite way. What I really want to do, though, is I want to land on a light side. Ideally, I'd land in one of these craters, but I don't quite know how I can sort of judge um, where they're going to be, because this thing's obviously rotating. On it. Well, okay, maybe not obviously, but as you would expect about a moon, it is, it, it is rotating. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to aim for a bright spot in the middle and I can maybe refine it on my way. And effectively what I'm doing here is the same maneuver, but the reason I'm doing it at periapsis is it's the lowest point and I'm trying to bring in the opposite side, which is the apoapsis, the highest point. So this is kind of the best spot that I can tighten my orbit uh, quite closely. So, I'm a little concerned, actually, about whether I'm skimming... Nah, I should be fine. Um, I'm definitely getting close to hitting the surface, but the game will kind of slow down when I get close enough, so... I'm just going to speed up so I hit that node. Oh, and I'm actually going to be approaching from this side, so I should have been checking that. 
I almost certainly am not going to hit a crater then, but... That's what the lights are for. I think I can handle harder line landings as long as I have those lights. And again, to give you an idea of the efficiency of a maneuver like this, um, you can recall... I mean, again, this is definitely not a an equivalent maneuver to collapsing my uh, orbit into the MUN, but, you know, 35.7 uh, meters a second, estimated burn of 4 seconds. Um, if I was trying to bring in the orbit from, let's say, the left-hand side over here, you'd be seeing larger values, which means it would cost more fuel. Uh, I think one of the terms they use a lot is delta V. Um, Again, the econ training kind of prepared me for that, so delta just a universal sign for change, and I can only assume that v is velocity. But ha what's happening in this game, right? You're changing your velocity by so much in a certain direction, and that, you know, ultimately when you decide to do that is going to determine whether you go faster or slower, whether you wind up in an orbit, whether you don't. So, I mean, if you want to think it of it purely as a game, it's just simply identifying kind of where the where the forces are. I just completely missed my burn while I'm babbling. That's fine, we can save it. Works for me. I might actually be able to hit it here too, so... I'll wait till I get closer to see. But yeah, basically, um, the name of the game kind of becomes identifying what the influences of these different uh, different bodies are. And if you can do that, um, then it just becomes a game of sort of nudging your craft where you need to go, uh, rather than, you know, what I've actually been doing a lot in, you know, in these casts, which is kind of just brute forcing this machine into, um, into the places I need to go. Um, I have to assume that this is something that comes with time, but uh, it's... Um, you know, certainly at this point, I'm just trying to get some consistency in terms of being able to perform landings and such. There's actually a scenario of a lunar landing which I haven't been able to complete yet, so... If I want some practice, I can always do that, but it's nice to do things of your own design. Like, obviously, part of the appeal of this game is that you get to design your own ships. Or in this case, design ships with the help of uh, people in chat. If I do this properly, I think the way I'm going to try and hit this crater is when I hit about this point, I'm going to start burning in retrograde, and the ideal will be that I burn to a point that it suddenly becomes a vertical descent, and as long as that happens anywhere you know, between here and here, I should be good. So that gives me a nice, like, wide... Um, you know, a nice white target to hit, um, so I can also afford to kind of go slow on this. I'm not, I'm blasting it at full speed, obviously. So now if I just let kind of nature take its course, I know I'm going to hit it, so I should maybe move in a little bit.
Okay, so we're okay on fuel. I don't know if it'll get... still don't know if it'll get me off the planet. But I'm sort of ending my horizontal component now. to guide me because I definitely don't think I am anywhere near I don't think this crater is anywhere near sea level so I can definitely see what they're talking about when saying that there's more uh, gravity on the moon like I'm definitely accelerating quite rapidly. This is definitely a weird thing to see on the moon if you look at the Apollo pictures. <laughs> I kind of screwed up the, um, horizontal movement, but... Alright, that's kind of scary, actually. Let's see what we can do about this. So I've created an interesting situation for myself in the sense that I've reintroduced kind of horizontal movement while I'm still trying to land. It's not going to be an elegant landing, but I think I can manage this. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is tough. Oh, it's gonna crash. Well. So much. Yeah. I really screwed that up at the end. <laughs> so the crazy thing is this thing will actually still get a, oh, actually, okay, so let's see. See if I can do something with the RCS to... <laughs> I could blow it up even more. <laughs> New mission. Can we get this back to Kerb? No, we cannot get this back to Kerb. Ah, <laughs> uh, what a complete train wreck! <laughs> uh, okay, that's cool. Um, I actually learned a lot from that. So, where that really went wrong, that would have been a pretty good landing. Save for the fact that I really, yeah, <laughs> uh, the 30-second delay is, I can still tell exactly what part you just watched. So I think the big thing that happened on um, on that particular mission, um, the landing would have been okay if I didn't uh, overcompensate a bit, which resulted in some uh, horizontal... Um, like a little bit too much horizontal force. Like at that point, the six meters a second was almost purely. I did in fact land on the moon. That is very true. <laughs> Outcome 
catastrophic failure. <laughs> um, yeah, we pretty much know everything that happened at these moments. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, anytime I do uh, a lunar landing, I'm going to need to find a way of dealing with the, the horizontal movement. Um, I think I didn't do myself any favors by making the giant cigar shape in the end. Um, certainly like once, once that thing was more than 30, 30 degrees tilted, um, I pretty much knew that it was going to be, as the outcome says, catastrophic failure. But, um, I mean, that was a lot better than expected in some ways too. All right, so last time I streamed for about four hours, um, I did not get a little a lot of sleep last night, actually, which probably accounts for maybe some of the commentary that I'm giving. So uh, I'd actually like to thank you, the Hammy Burglar. I am not accustomed to having somebody stay at the very end of the chat. It was an absolute pleasure sharing this game with you. Um, if you have, I'll hang out for a little bit uh, now, but I think that was the last launch that I did. I think I'm going to take some time to study, study up on. Um, Mun landings. Um, but before I go, did you have any last questions about the game, about the stream, or anything, anything else like that? I really appreciate you staying to the end. Getting your message sent at uh, 11:01. That specific time, I can't remember. If Prairie, Grand Prairie is an hour ahead of that. Uh, I'm just gonna head to the title screen. I do a little bit of an outro, so um, if there's anything that you were gonna ask that I no questions. Great, awesome. I appreciate feedback like that. So cool. Yeah, I absolutely appreciate uh, appreciate comments like that. I'm going to do an outro, just play 